First of all, I'm going to talk about the background and in specifically the DNA sequence, the traits. The DNA sequence is a 3 billion length 4 letter alphabet code of 99.9% inter-individual similarity. One gene is a section of this sequence that provides a blueprint for the amino acid sequence that makes up a polypeptide chain. The sequence that makes up the gene is known as a genotype. Proteins are made up of a number of polypeptide chains and it is proteins that are responsible for an individual's features, traits and phenotype. A, gen a genetic disease results from malformed proteins being synthesized in response to the genotype. For example, haemoglobin has four polypeptide chains, two identical alpha and two identical beta chains. These two different types of polypeptide are determined by two separate genes, sickle cell amenia. Sickle cell amenia is caused by a mutation in a single gene, which results in just one amino acid being changed in the beta, in the beta chain of haemoglobin. The most common type of genetic variation is a single nuclide polymorphism, also known as an SNP. We can estimate the contribution of the genetic sequence to a phenotype by identifying genes responsible for a trait and determining variants in the DNA. Sequence that contribute to variation potentially allows prediction of traits using only genetic information. This is known as heritability. For example, genetic variation accounts for 80% of height variability in the population. Hundreds of variants, some implicated in increasing height and other decreasing height, have been reported. So if, an in, so if an individual carries a large number of variants associated with larger height, we can predict they will have a height greater than the population average. Therefore, if the amount of trait that is determined by the genetic code is known, the trait can be predicted. This trait includes diseases. Variants have been identified that are linked with disease. Individuals coring these variants are more likely to express a particular disease. This knowledge could lead to tailored medical care and prevention in the future. The problem. Variants linked to traits were discovered using genome-wide association studies. In a genome-wide association study, data in terms of measurement of a trait and the presence of variants from a large number of individuals is collected. A correlation between a trait or traits and variants is then calculated. Genome-wide association studies collect single nucleotide polymorphism information as this is the most common form of variant. This slide shows an example calculation illustrating the methodology of a case control genome-wide association study. The allele count of each measured single nucleotide polymorphism is evaluated, in this case using a chi-squared test, to identify variants associated with the trait in question. The numbers in this example are taken from the 2007 study of coronary artery disease that showed that individuals with the guanian allele of SNP1, RS133049, were overrepresented amongst coronary artery disease patients. So taking a closer look at the data, we can see uh, single nucleotide polymorphism 1 or SNP1 um, we can see the presence of that um, SNP in the patients and in the controls so when we're talking about controls we're talking about people who hold of that gene but don't show the trait and in this case the trait is the presence of the disease so if we look at the cases first, we look at the patients. So 2,104 of the 4,000 patients tested um, have SNP1, uh, which is a frequency of 52.6%. Now if we compare that to the control group, so we're comparing that to um, a, a group of people who don't have the disease but do hold the SNP gene, 44.6% of these individuals hold SNP1, but don't show the trait. Now, using the chi-square test, this indicates that the, there is a correlation 
between the presence of SNP1 and the um, the presence of the trait, and in this case, um, the uh, manifestation of coronary artery disease. Um, if we look at another example, SNP2, which is a single nucleotide polymorphism um, um, in another part of the chromosome, uh, or in another part of the genome, we can see with SNP1, 41.2% of the patients tested um, hold the SNP2 gene. Now, if we compare that to the control group, so the control group doesn't have the disease, 42.2% um, of this control group um, holds the SNP2 gene. Now, using the chi-square test, this indicates that there isn't a correlation between the presence of the SNP2 gene um, and the trait of coronary artery disease. This next slide brings together data from a number of genome-wide association studies um, and um, comes from the 2012 Bushmore paper. Now, the graph shows um, not only how common um, disease variants or variants uh, implicating the disease are within a population, but also shows how likely it is to display a particular trait or particular disease if the variant is present in an individual's genome. So any um, variant that is seen towards the top of the graph indicates that it is um, an individual would be more likely to display the particular trait or particular disease if they hold that particular variant. If the variant is towards the right of the graph, this indicates how common the variant is within the population. So if we look at some examples um, um, towards the, um, the top right of our graph there, we've got the variant APOE4, um, and it is quite a common variant um, within the population, and because it's towards the top of the graph, it also indicates that if this variant is present within an individual's genome, uh, it is, um, there's a large likelihood that they are going to display this trait, and in this, partic this particular trait are the symptoms, are the Alzheimer's symptoms. If we look at another example, um, uh, another common trait um, is LMTK2, uh, and it's a very common trait found within, uh, a very common uh, variant found within um, the population. However, having the trait um, within the genome um, does not mean that there's a high likelihood that they would develop um, the trait that is associated with the variant, which in this case is, is prostate cancer. Um, so in terms of our genome-wide association studies, typically they are able to identify common variants that have um, small um, effect sizes. So we're looking at being able to identify um, variants that, that are in the lower right of this, um, uh, of this graph. However, variants account for a fraction of the total genetic contribution to a trait when compared to twin studies. For example, genome-wide association studies have identified 50 variants influencing height that account for 5% of the phenotypic variation.
but as described before, the data that comes from twin studies indicate that genes account for 80% of this variation. And so this gap between 5 and 80% is known as missing heredi uh, heredibility. This missing heritability could be due to the variant interaction, epigenetics. So epigenetics is the interaction uh, of the genes with the environment uh, or other reasons that haven't been determined. This is an important area of research as personalised medical treatment is dependent on how we use genomes to predict disease risk. In order to determine the influence of genes on disease poses a computational intensive data analysis problem using large scale data sets. The issues with GWAS is, is that statistical and testing equations used to process the data have an unmodeled factor. I do not take into account effects of variants in the genome that are not being included in the test. Therefore, the certain degrees of relatedness would inflate the values of dissociated statistics given false positives, i.e. GWAS do not take into account population structure. For example, if a GWAS used a pair of siblings and a pair of unrelated individuals where siblings share half of their genome, therefore half of their genome being identical, the values of the effects of the variants contained in this genome would contribute to statistically significant trait associations. The paper written by Yang about common SMPs explain a large proportion of the heritability for human height suggests that misinheritability is due to the fact that common variants contribute more to traits than associated variants, i.e. due to many variants spread through the genome, each having small effects rather than a few specific variants having large effects. The paper written by Purcell about common polygenic variation contribute to risk of schizophrenia and bipolar disorder shows if the significant threshold is reduced, i.e. significant variants as well as Variants having weaker effects were included, the predictive model showed better performance. However, this is analogous to overfitting in machine learning. These mixed models, which are statistical models containing both fixed effects and random effects, are the future in determining traits from genome information. Right, I see. So what I mean by twin studies, twin studies are studies that establish a connection between the genetic sequence and a trait. And this is done by comparing the correlation of traits between pairs of maternal twins, which have identical DNA, with pairs of fraternal twins, where the DNA isn't uh, identical or non-identical. Um, and by comparing these two, um, and by comparing these two, um, heritability can be calculated. So that's one way to calculate heredib uh, hered heritability. The other way is using the genome-wide association studies. Um, and the issue is the difference in the results between the two. There's a massive difference between uh, between the two. So when we look at the genome as a whole, traits are determined um, by the genes at a high percentage. For example, height, um, twin studies show that height is um, determined by the genes um, by a factor of 80%. Whereas if we use genome-wide association studies, um, we have identified 50 variants that influence height, but they only seem to affect 5% um, of the variation in height. Well, I think this is a major drawback, uh, drawback of the paper um, in that algorithms involved in um, in in this study are not really discussed. It's more of a description 
uh, of the problem. If we think about it, uh, computer science and algorithms used to um, uh, um, work on this problem can be split into two. Firstly, um, algorithms directly involved in, um, uh, in determining how genes influence traits. Um, we can look at it as uh, a classification problem, a data mining problem in that we're trying to find the variants linked to a trait, i.e. if a variant is present in an individual's genome, what's the probability of them having or developing the trait? So if we look at it as a classification problem, we would say the individual is an instance. Uh, the uh, SNPs, um, would be the features and the trait or the disease would be the class. Um, additionally, uh, algorithms are, have been developed that um, enable us to scan the genome of individuals to see if a particular gene or variant is present. Um, examples of these algorithms are the, the FASTA and BLASTA algorithms, which, um, um, which are able to identify whether a, a particular gene is present in a genome.